Now, China's top COVID official and multiple cities have signaled a possible relaxing of the country's strict zero-tolerance approach to the virus. It comes after nationwide protests calling for an end to lockdowns. Vice Premier Sun Chunlan, who oversees China's COVID efforts, says the Omicron variant is more transmissible but less deadly. She says the country is facing a new situation which requires what she calls new tasks. Ms. Sun also made no mention of China's dynamic zero COVID policy in her latest remarks. Capital Beijing is meanwhile planning to scale back testing requirements for those who do not leave their homes frequently. But residents will still require a negative COVID test taken within 48 hours if they want to enter public places such as restaurants and shopping malls. Restrictions also eased in cities such as Guangzhou, the site of dramatic clashes between police and protesters. But China's stance towards zero COVID has often shifted dynamically. In early November, authorities announced a slew of more moderate control measures, which included reducing quarantine time for inbound travellers and close contacts. Analysts had hoped then that that meant a policy change to start living with the virus. But city governments locked down again when COVID cases surged to record levels in recent weeks. And our correspondent Lo Min Min joins us for more. Our Chinese authorities, Min Min, have in the past taken U-turns after relaxing COVID-19 measures. Do you see this happening again? It's hard to say because the central government directive has been very clear recently. They want all localities to follow that 20-point plan to relax COVID-19 measures. But the problem is no province wants to be the first to lose control of COVID-19. This virus takes just six, six to eight weeks to sweep through the population. And experts are saying that we could see hundreds of millions of cases in China within 10 days if China shifts away from zero COVID. And so that's going to overwhelm the medical system unless the government shifts away from the old playbook of quarantining all close contacts and COVID-19 patients. Now we are seeing that the government, uh, we are seeing encouraging signs with several cities announcing that they are allowing close contacts to quarantine at home. The next signal to look out for is whether they will allow COVID patients with mild symptoms to also quarantine at home. And the, for the first time, the government has set a hard target for vaccinating the elderly. They want all localities to get the elderly above 80 years old to be fully vaccinated and boosted by January and they want to boost that vaccination rate from 40% to 90%. Now that is a monumental task to take place over the next two months but it shows that concrete steps are being taken to pave the way for a possible reopening. Oh, Min Min, of course these, uh, this apparent easing as of today in any case uh, could be seen as the Chinese authorities appearing to respond to uh, pu public protest. Uh, might they also want to downplay any perception that protests on the street can in any way sway decisions made by President Xi Jinping and the ruling Communist Party? Yeah, that's the challenge, isn't it? The government doesn't want to be seen to be caving to public demands. And so they appear to be using a combination of uh, law enforcement as well as softening the ground to shift the narrative towards COVID-19. Now, the government hasn't said that they are shifting away from zero COVID, but state media has been refraining from using that term. And they are also publishing articles interviewing COVID-19 patients. And the takeaways from these articles appear to be that getting COVID-19 isn't such a big deal and the symptoms aren't that bad. And so many experts are looking towards China possibly reopening by March or June next year, especially after the annual parliamentary sessions end in March. Oh, thanks, Roger. Lo Min Min speaking to us there with the latest update. Oh, Hong Kong also battling a new COVID-19 surge, daily infections topping 10,000 for the first time since, since September. The death toll risen by more than 40% in the past week. Health officials have warned of a potential double whammy of COVID-19 and influenza cases during the colder months. Authorities fear that patients who get infected with both viruses at the same time could face higher risks of serious symptoms and a death. Despite the uptick in cases, the government says it has no plans to tighten social distancing measures.